Let's start with DNS. So in here, this is true DNS. I guess it's easier if I do it here. This is something I normally would not want to do, but what I could have is, oh, I got to fix this formatting. Ah, come on. We need consistent formatting. I do uh, uh, spaces too, personally. Ah, see, looks so much nicer. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is this is going to let me type in an IP address. I'm going to copy that into the domain lookup field, and then I'm going to replace it with whatever the lookup happens. So this is effectively a DNS lookup if you ever wanted to do it. And Justin, I thought you said you don't ever do that. No, I said I don't as a default do it. There are some edge use cases where this can be helpful. One example, let's assume that a machine connected to, machine connects to HTTP 1.2.3.4. This, if it's an internet IP address, is what we refer to as a naked IP address. It doesn't have its DNS close on. I didn't come up with that term, I don't like it, but that's what it's called. So in this case, I would do a reverse lookup on something that's a naked IP request because I want additional information. I would also do a geo ASN because I want to, that to tell my analyst why did we reach directly out to an IP address. That's one use case I will do this. So it's up and running. It's kind of doesn't stand out really well, but we see this. That means it's ready for me to type. So 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. And notice that's what I typed and it did a reverse lookup to dns.google.com. Okay, 1.2.3.4, oop, typo, 1.2.3.4. I did the typo again. No PTR record for that, it didn't get replaced. Uh, let me do this example we did earlier. Let's copy that, paste that. Notice, there it is, it pulled it in. So simple DNS reverse lookup.